All right, people. So if you are joining us on this live broadcast, um, I'm live at the University of Lagos. I don't know if I should have uh, <laughs> announced <laughs> my location right now. Well, but whatever the case, that's it. I'm at the University of Lagos. And I'm here to do uh, a state of the nation audit <laughs> with uh, a senior lecturer at the University of Lagos, senior lecturer, political science, and a senior research fellow uh, Institute of African and Diaspora Studies. Am I correct about that uh, yeah, description, yeah. sir? So it's Dr. Kayode Iswola. Uh, some of you already are familiar with this face and you already know the way it thinks. Okay, so today together we are going to be looking at uh, state of the Nigerian politi politics. Okay, so uh, Dr. Iswola is a voice that criticizes. <laughs> But this time I want to know whether he's still criticizing or whether they are coming to accept that, okay, Nigeria is on the right path. And I think that is where I want to start. Sir, um, is Nigeria now on the right path? Well, let, let, let me start by uh, your intro. Dr. Ishuala is the voice that criticizes. Maybe I shall amend it and say Dr. Ishuala is the type that speaks truth to power. I'm an intellectual, and the role of intellectual in the society is to speak truth to power, irrespective of whoever is affected. Speak truth to power. That, however, does not mean that the intellectual may be in power tomorrow. When he's in power tomorrow, he's likely to be blinded also by the spoils of political office. Let the other intellectuals to speak truth to him in power. So it's a cycle. And once you follow that cycle, a country will move in its own direction. Having clarified that, is Nigeria on the right path? Yeah. Um, well, I know Nigeria is on a path. Uh, but I'm very far from being sure whether the path is right or not. And I'll give reasons. Um, recently, you did a calculation to transfer what you call democracy day from May 29 to June 12. To me, this is one of the things I will consider as putting cat before the horse. Or, to use the word of fellow Nicola Kokuti, parambulation. You don't know where you are going. You don't know where you are coming from. You don't know your right, you don't know your left. You appear to be moving, but if you look at you well, you are right on the same spot. Again, parambulation. Why do I say so? <clears throat> what May 29 represented when it was alive is a day when the Nigerian people moved from military rule to a semblance of democracy. That's May 29. June 12 is a day when the Nigerian people went out en masse to cast their vote and give their mandate to somebody. And, and that is dialectics, the very day when the ruling class decided to truncate the mandate of the people. To me, it is a semblance of May 29 that you celebrate because you are moving from uh, autocratic rule to a semblance of democracy. For June 12, it's a day of sober reflection. You don't celebrate. It's a day when Nigerians should come out and say, never again should anybody, military or godfather or whoever, tamper with the mandate of the Nigerian people. So when I hear government say they are celebrating June 12, I, I, I begin to look at them like lucid, and I'm sure even Steve Wonder will begin to wonder in heaven why these people don't understand what they do. In any event, this is Nigeria. So you will help me judge whether from this latest development we're on the right path or we're on the wrong path. All I know is that we're in a path. So help me to do the judgment. Uh, last time you and I had uh, a conversation like this, it was uh, Jonathan that was president. So let us also look at this transition from uh, an incumbent to the opposition, whether it is also a semblance of progress at all. 
again, we are still parambulating. <laughs> you know, I take my mind back to 2015. Uh, the politics was heated up. People were complaining about insecurity. They were complaining about economy running down. And that led to what I call oppositional rascality on the part of the opposition then, which is the ruling class now. Today, Nigerian people are not only complaining about the same thing, they are willing that these things have aggravated beyond bearable positions. Are we making progress? I don't think so. I see government do a lot of wonders. The minister will come out and tell us by GDP, per capita income, and all this big, big grammar that they do in economics. And then they tell us that the country is making progress. But I think African sense is better than that. Yorubas have a proverb. They say, onta anje, kola anta, konsho we omoni garinye. Apology if you don't understand your but no, 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 it no, makes no, sense no, to me. No, that you don't need you don't need the wisdom of Solomon. You don't need the economic jargons of this world to know whether you are making progress, yeah. at least economically. Go to your street, go to your uncle, go to your aunt, go to your company, find out from people. Are you better off today than what you were in 2015? The answer you get to me is more authentic than all the economic jargons. After all, economy is supposed to be a social science that studies human behavior. If that is true, because that's what I read in the textbook, the human being himself is the best laboratory to tell you what it is, not grammatology, as Fela would put it. So again, economically, I don't think we are making progress. Um, Security-wise, once upon a time, Boko Haram was the issue. Niger Delta was the issue. Today, you have new version of Boko Haram, you have new version of Daniel Delta, you now have sophisticated arm of Boko Haram, which is called Fulani Etsmen. Nigerian security is threatened, the unity is under threat. And only a blind man will declare at this point that we are making progress. I'm not like Christians who will face problem and say it is well. If you face problem and you tell your God it is well, you are telling your God that I'm not complaining about my situation. I am complaining about the situation of Nigeria. It is not well. It's high time we began to think of what to do and how to do it so that we can have a better country. We don't have any other country apart from All this. Right, so if we, having, having already said, it doesn't look like we are moving at all, okay? And then we have to start thinking by your recommendation we have to start thinking about how to move from here. Now, if you would recommend how to move, what would you recommend, sir? Well, um, we have said this over and over again. The Nigerian state is an arrangement that is designed not to work at all. Okay? Go back to 1914. What happened was a rape. There's a thin line between lovemaking and rape. That thin line is consent. What happened in 1914 was a rape. How do we correct this rape and now create consent between the parties that form Nigeria today? If we don't visit that, we are not going to move. You can use any nomenclature. Sovereign National Conference, National Conference, restructuring, Confab, or if you like, call it Ajan Le Coco for all you care. <laughs> if we don't visit that road, we will continue to parambulate. You know. Okay, so uh, th this will be leading us to questioning amalgamation of 1914, Dr. Isola. But uh, I think we need to have a short break now because of uh, certain, but a lot of people are already uh, responding via the chat, you know. Philip Otoko is greeting Dr. Esola. Good morning. Uh, a lot of people are watching from YouTube. I don't know. The people on Facebook are not yet uh, responding. But uh, we'll go have a short break now to look at some technical issues. And then we'll have to continue from uh, the state of our union. <laughs> 